Okay, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Adoption Engagement Forum on 25th of November 2022. Uh, good to have a few uh, few sort of newer faces and a, a few more experienced people on the call as well. Uh, just to quickly, uh, if I can, look at the agenda. So quickly have a few um, sort of welcomes introductions at the beginning, and then Adam from Sport England's kindly joined us, so he's going to give a bit of an update on a couple of things and then we've got a few updates um, kind of more general open active uh, updates that we wanted wanted to give you as well and I think everyone on this call will probably be in there already but just a reminder for, for anyone or anyone watching the recording that um, if you haven't already please join our slack workspace at slack.openactive.io it's a great place to um, hear about any updates that are going on with both the Adoption Engagement Forum and other stuff in the uh, initiative, um, and also a good place to kind of ask questions and get support if you've got any anything you're not sure about or anything you want to share with the community, it's a great place to, to do that. Uh, so just before we get started, to quickly go around uh, just for the sort of sake of recording and everyone gets to know each other, quick um, introduction. So I'll start with myself because I've realized from previous uh, weeks that I go around everyone and then forget to do myself. So <laughs> my name is Tim Corby and I'm an engagement consultant at the Open Data Institute. Um, so in no particular order. Um, if I can start with you, Charlie. Yep, Charlie, Charlie Merrick, Art, Commercial Director at Playfinder Powering Book Tech. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, Kanika. Hello, I'm Kanika. I work as an impact manager with the ODI and I'm on the Open Active Project as a MEL uh, manager. Great, thank you. Uh, Jack? Uh, morning, Jack Lord, Open Data Services. Uh, we are working with Sporting Wind on technical input to Open Active. Thank you. Uh, Adam? Hi, everyone. Yes, uh, Adam Freeman Pask, Head of Digital Innovation at Sporting England. Thank you. Uh, Julie? Uh, morning, everyone. Judy King, uh, Delivery Project Manager at the ODI. Thank you. Uh, Tom? Hi, everyone. Tom Marley, Co-Founder at Played. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Ollie? Hi, I'm Ollie, a Project Manager at London Sport. Thank you. Uh, Sophia? Hi, Sophia Worth. I'm a graduate trainee at the ODI and on the policy agenda on the Open Active Project. Great, thank you. And uh, last but not least, uh, Nick. Hello, Nick, Director of INN. Brilliant, thanks everyone. Um, and so just moving quickly on to the first agenda item, which um, is a, an update from Adam. So if I could pass over to you, Adam, please. Yeah, we'll do. Um, well, uh, Tim and everyone on the call, thanks very much for giving me a little slot to, to talk. Um, First of all, um, the Adoption Engagement Forum is a really important forum for us, and I appreciate that we've not had a Sport England representative attending recently, and that's partly been due to a series of ill health on my part, uh, and also a changeover of staff from Izzy Champion to myself uh, on this work, so Izzy might have been attending previously. Um, but we really see this, this forum is really important because we want to hear your thoughts on the initiative and how we work together to, to move it forward. Um, so I appreciate it. It's, it, I, I'm, I'm being flattered today with being given the floor to, to talk a bit about some of the work um, we've been doing and where the initiative is going. Um, but just wanted to highlight this is a really important forum for us and we want to listen when we come to these forums. Um, I guess a couple of things to update. So uh, you're aware sort of Open Active has been funded um, for a fifth phase. Uh, so that was an investment into the ODI of 800 grand up until Jan 2024. So that's really positive for the initiative. It means we keep everything going and everyone can keep doing their work because it is a thing and it's very real and we want to make it bigger and better. Um, what else was there? So we have got some exciting updates to come in terms of how we're working open and transparently and that's being led by the ODI, which is really positive. And again, Timmy mentioned it, but um, you know it's really good to hear this is being recorded and being shared so anyone that missed the session can join in. We really want to grow this uh, forum and make sure that everyone is involved in this and can share their views. Um, I guess just to sort of link into a couple of other things that are connected to this work and I think are really positive. Um, my work at Sporting covers a couple of projects that um, support this work. So I lead on the Digital Marketing Hub with Simspa. Um, and that's a really positive platform that helps people build skills in the sector. Uh, and next year, there's plans to do a bit of a collaboration between Open Active and um, 
and marketing skills. Uh, so that's in the pipeline, which will be really exciting because that looks a, a, a bit more around how the how open data is used as a new marketing channel, which is what we've always pitched pitched it as. But I guess it's trying to sort of bring marketers into the sort of understanding around the value of the initiative, which is good. Um, next week, uh, it's always good to have some evidence around um, open data and how it's being used. But next week, we have UK Active launching their digital futures report. Now, this is based on some work we've been doing with them around digital maturity in the sector. Uh, and that report is released on Wednesday. And critically, if you, if you scan through it for where it references open data, you'll see that of the leisure operators that were surveyed in that in this year's report, 40% um, say they consume or publish open data, which, which felt quite high uh, or quite positive. Um, but 23% were completely unaware of what open data is. Uh, which is a bit worrying. It shows we need to do more on, on the awareness side to make sure everyone is fully briefed on, on what it is and what it can do. Um, and then it, it suggested that only 20%, 27% of private operators consume or publish open data um, and only 13 of operators um, without sites in England. Sorry, that's not, not quite clear what that, that stat was. I think the other stats were more, more, more punchy there in terms of 40% say they consume or publish open data is the main one to take away. Um, but that report is coming out on Wednesday next week, so worth a little look at, worth adding your thoughts, but that gives us a bit of a baseline as to what's going on across a, a chunk of the sector, but not the whole sector. Um, what else was I going to touch you about? I think uh, another area of work that's important to us is digital inclusion. Uh, and you might have seen, I've been doing a bit of blogging on that week, this week. Um, and yeah, obviously Open Active is a, is a solid block of our work that we're really keen to, to amplify and, and make the most of. And the general trajectory is, a, is around really driving specific use cases. So I guess that's, that's an area where this forum is going to be really powerful is to sort of look and discuss various use cases. Um, this isn't specifically a use case, but if we go on to the next slide, Tim, um, we want to use this forum to really talk about opportunities that are popping up for other funding or for projects to test what they're trying to do. Uh, and this was just this is just one particular one of those that we wanted to share with this group and, and just make people aware of. Um, it is in its early stages, but essentially this is really positive because the Royal College of Art put in a bid to the UK Research and Innovation, one of the UK, UK Research and Innovation Councils and managed to secure 3.3 million of funding to look at, um, it's looking at tack tackling, um, you know, climate change, but through something they pitched as the digital economy. And within the digital economy, they have, it, they have specifically highlighted the use of things like open data. So this is where us at Sport England were like, well, yes, we really like the idea of using open data. Would you try using open, our, our open active standard? Um, so we've not had any particular kickoff meetings or any, any further information on this, apart from they've secured some funding and they are devising a bit of a plan. But in those forums, we obviously want to push home the idea of them testing um, the use of open active in some way. And again, that's where we would we would draw in the expertise from this forum to make sure that they are piloting or testing in the right way or using groups of organisations that have already done some good piloting and building off that work so it can go into their, their research work, right? Um, so early stages at this at this point, but just wanted to share it and um, we'll be coming back with more information once we've been involved in the process that the RCA are doing on this. But um, it's a nice one because it's slightly outside of our sector, but it just shows um, that there are different things that will connect with the work we're doing uh, in a positive way. Um, is there another slide for me, Tim, or is that? I think I think that might be it from me, to be honest. I, th uh, I think that was about it. Yeah, it was, it was. Yeah, it was fairly fairly kind of relaxed. Just um, just to kind of update any, anything else um, you've got. I just to clarify quickly on, on one thing you said, which I think was just a slip of the tongue. But you said um, that the funding for the ODR was up till January twenty twenty four, when it's um, it's January twenty twenty three. So I just wanted to confirm that. Uh, no, no, it's it's twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty three is very very soon, Tim. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, yeah, no, no it, it's it's for eighteen months, but yeah, no, so um, and yeah, just just yeah. to wrap up. Um, so yeah, it's um, so I guess I guess for me, obviously, yeah. really really important this forum. Apologies for not being in the previous ones, but we will be here going forwards. Um, digital maturity work, I think, it adds value to the sector, and that's coming out next week. Digital Marketing Hub is another platform that's really good for skills development. Um, and yeah, that was all for me, really, Tim. Okay.
great thank you sorry i think i'm uh, confusing myself but that, that 18 months runs up to the end of next year which is 2023 and that's on end of december it is adam december 2023 yeah or yeah. jan 2024 right same sort of thing right <laughs> yeah Sorry, I thought you said December 2024, but maybe I, maybe I misheard or I was getting confused. That's okay, yeah, no worries. Yeah. <laughs> Clear that one up. Yeah. Um, that's great. Thank you very much, Adam. Um, did anyone have any questions for Adam while we're here or while we've got him? Don't all speak at once. Thanks, Judy. Hi there, sorry. I'll, I'll go if no, one, no one's about to. Um, sorry, I'll get my video back on. Um, thanks, for Adam. It's useful in, insight. I think there's generally good momentum around Open Active at the moment, and I definitely think it would help having more comms from Sport England and sharing kind of some of the good, good kind of work that's being done on the ground. I think that's been relatively lacking um over the last 12 18 months and it definitely does help um anecdotally we we speak to lots of ngbs active partnerships all the time and there's still quite a high proportion especially ngbs that aren't aware of open active and considering there's a relatively low number of of those in the sector i feel like there's certain steps that can can be taken to like engage with those specific organizations who can move the needle quite a lot if because they also then have trickle down effects to clubs coaches and and providers on the ground so yeah i think welcome any sort of kind of advocation of open active and yeah if you want any if if, if there's a forum for discussion around kind of how how that might work and how that comms piece is, is is more kind of connected to the work we're doing. It would really help ourselves, people on the ground that are kind of advocating for open data. And as soon as they've heard about it from you guys, they see you as kind of like the uh, authority on things. So it, it does definitely help. Um, Tom, I, I think, sorry, just jump in there, Tom. I think I think this is an area I feel very passionate about as well in terms of comms. Like I feel um, so. Uh, Digital maturity coming out next week, right, is, is a sort of very first step into getting people to engage generally around like what they're doing from a technology perspective. You know, it's a sort of it's an entry point, isn't it? Um, open data is quite it can be seen as quite advanced. Um, it, it's a really difficult topic, and a lot of a lot of the time when you, you sort of even broach the topic of digital or service design or open data, that sort of people glaze over quite quickly, don't they? So it's a it's a difficult one to get right and to to pitch at a level and get the comms flowing. So I think um, one project I didn't mention was some of the work we've done with some of the NGBs around the Birmingham um, 2022 Commonwealth Games. So we've been running a, um, an innovation and digital accelerator with that group um, as part of the funding to try and help them design uh, digital experiences that would reach underserved audiences and working with a charity called CAST, uh, which is the Center for Accelerating Social Technology. Uh, so that's been trying to take a different perspective to how you get those types of organisations to uh, engage with and think about the use of technology. Um, so that's been one area that we've tried to explore doing that. But I think generally comms is really important, Tom. And I think something that's come out of that, which has helped people learn is, is a style. It's just open working critically. So just trying to share with what you're doing and how you're doing it. Not necessarily going too technical, but just just, again, trying to create the content where people can at least find a way into the topic right um but no i totally agree that tom there is a value in sport england doing the comms as well because yes as you say people do do uh do do trust or see us as a uh you know a, um a reputable organization for comms to be coming from so yeah we, we need to do more of that too tom so yeah take your point yeah agree on ag agree on the point around um simplifying it and it kind of being part of a digital journey it does i think going straight in with talking about technical standards, et cetera, is, is probably what us, definitely ourselves and probably other members of the group have learned that it's, um, <clears throat> there, there's certain ways to position the proposition and it's, yeah, part of kind of more of a digital transformation piece and with like the output being open data because they're using technologies that are, are compliant with it. Um, so yeah, I think I, I agree on that point.
Tom, the other the other challenge we've also seen, and um, it's just the rotation of staff in the sector, right, as well. So we're talking about you're upskilling some people, and hopefully those people stay in the sector, but they're changing around the organisations. So one organisation was then engaged, and then not so engaged, and um, that's another challenge that I guess hopefully open working people blogging about where their organisation is at is a means of creating some. Uh, permanency around what, what's in the public domain around where someone is and what they're trying to achieve but um but yeah a, a, another another challenge to, to what we're trying to do and i think like there's kind of comms pieces as well but like when there's i'd say uh, across the bigger organizations um ngbs etc i think it's going to be important to uh, strategically engage with their ceos or whoever's responsible for um driving change at the organization to kind of at least be aware of it and and have a proposition to to engage with it um because i th feel like a lot of the kind of yeah people moving across the organization creates that kind of loss of momentum but um i feel like there's a lot like when you're speaking to people a lot of the reason why they're doing things is because it's come from from the top down and there's a lot of bottom up engagement work going on um and but there's a lack of top down and i think the having a, a a mechanism to be able to have those conversations a simple kind of yes no are you engaging with with this work we can help support it um from a kind of sport england odi perspective i think would would go a long way as well no, I think I think that's a good point, Tom. And something I was trying to explore as well is um, the use of some of the other umbrella bodies within the sector to do to do some of that as well. So it's a bit of Sport England and supported with some of those um, umbrellas that represent certain pockets of the sector as well. I guess that's where someone like UK Active is quite valuable, or the Active Partnership Network, or the Sport Rec Alliance, um, potentially. You know, but uh, acknowledging that Sport England has value there as well, right? Um, yeah. Agreed. Thanks, Tom. I just quickly wanted to um, highlight something from the chat that Nish has put in there, just in case um, anyone missed it, and just for anyone watching the recording that he's put. Um, I agree with Tom. Um, was on a call yesterday with a provider who said, Sport England UK Active and CL UK aren't talking about this. Is it even important or something they support? And that's um, Nish from I'm in. I don't know if there's, I th unfortunately, I think he's dropped off the call since putting, putting that in there. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to that, Nick, or if, if Adam, if there's anything you wanted to respond to that. Um, I, I, th I think it's probably picks the point that comms, we're not doing enough, right? Um, so, yeah, I think. Um, Look, at Sport England, we want to do, we, you know, we want to shout about this more, I guess. Um, you know, there's a balance here between, yes, it's, it's between us at the ODI, uh, Tim, sorry, you, the team at the ODI and Sport England to put some combined comms out in their space, right? I think some of the work that's gone on over the last month or so has been pretty positive, you know. Um, I think we just keep doing more of it, you know, and make sure that it's, um, you know, it reaches all those people, you know, because that's a shame to hear that, you know, a provider you think would be, maybe closer to this kind of work is still not really sort of picking up that we're we're invested we're all invested in this right um yeah no definitely agree agree with all of that um did anyone else have any comments i don't want to put adam too much on the spot but <laughs> anyone else have any any questions or or comments or things they wanted to to chat with adam about just want to say it's great to see you here adam i'm glad that we could uh, make this happen and uh, and yeah, that that is going to make a big difference. I think going forward, as word gets out that I think, as Tom was saying, the bottom up effort continues. Um, there's a lot of people doing bottom up work that aren't on this call, um, but I think knowledge that there's a top down route that you can talk talk to here, right, is going to be a good incentive for them to join and, and participate in this. So it's not just all the bottom up people getting together and talking about how we need to get more top down support, <laughs> which is something that we have, oh, it was not in our gift, but is is within yours. So so thanks so much for, for, for coming. No, Nick, thanks. Thanks for emphasizing that. I think it's one of those things where, um, uh, yeah, like, just, yeah, personally but maybe i haven't valued how important that is but hearing that from from you that's that is really important you know and, and i need to make sure that we you know we, we always dedicate time to make sure that there is a sporting and representative listening 
to 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 the people that are involved in this work or trying to get involved i think it's um as you say it's it's really it's a really important feedback for the initiative uh, and it's fundamental for people to feel that their voices are being heard in this work um so yeah I'm, i really apologize for one just unfortunate illnesses that i've missed and then also a couple of sessions where i've missed where i've just been a bit overloaded with work um but no this is definitely a key a key date in the diary that will always have a sport england representative on it um and, and you know we've also got some of our um got a couple of couple of chaps from our um of our um from odsc and substance on the call that have been helping so i think we've got jack today haven't we um but i know rob has hopped in a couple of calls as well but yeah uh it's definitely will happen i think i think it's a really good point nick great uh thank you very much um in which case um i'll just um move along the agenda and the next up was just a few kind of updates that we had that we wanted to uh, run by everyone and and get out there so firstly um wanted to highlight that there's an upcoming opportunity to apply to be on the steering committee and um some communications and, and sort of uh, adverts around uh, the application process and how you can apply um, and what the role will entail um, will be coming out early next week so um, very imminently so yeah I would really encourage anyone who's interested to, to take a look at that and um, put in an application we want to have a as you know broad and um, and bigger a selection of, of candidates um as possible so it'd be really great to to have anybody who's interested in to put in an application but also really encourage all of you to help uh, spread the word and um sh share the advert and the, and the comms that's going out um with your networks as well um just to to hopefully re reach reach some more people and and get um make sure lots of people across the sector are aware of this opportunity um, like I say, the comms will be going out around this early next week, um, and that will probably come through uh, the ODI channels, Sport England channels, and and Open Active channels as well. So, so it should be hopefully quite visible. But and um, lots of opportunities for for you to cascade those messages through your own through your own networks as well, which we'd really appreciate. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to that, Adam or Julie. Oh no, I just I just think it's an awesome opportunity. Um, you know, and it's opening out the opportunity for people to join that sort of top-down approach um and be on that steering committee. Uh yeah, it's really exciting. Um and yeah, we'll, again, to the point earlier, we'll make sure there's loads of comms so everyone's aware of the the process, the deadlines. Um, but yeah. Cool. Um, I would just say just to encourage everybody to promote it on their own socials um as well, uh, to get that word out. But yeah, thanks, Tim. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, keep it keep an eye out for that in um, early, early next week. Um, and unless anyone has any questions on that quickly. No. Nope. Okay, in which case, um, next up, we were just going to talk quickly about some of the KPIs as well, and some upcoming work on, on publishing and um, broadcasting those. So I'll hand over to Kanika, who will just run through that quickly. Thanks, Tam. Um, so in general, like the reason we felt that we could uh, discuss all of the KPIs right now is because as part of uh, Open Active's uh, work commitment to open working, actually, we will be making all the KPIs for phase five public in the coming two, three weeks. So it will be uh, published as a blog on the ODI website, again, as a addition to the existing comms that's happening and that we need to expedite that further uh, before mid-December. So invite you all to also go through those um, also because this forum has often talked about uh, metrics and measurement of progress and uh, we want to also have like certain KPIs uh, agreed upon for this group moving on so I'll just go through right now like why we have a monitoring evaluation and learning uh, kind of a uh, uh, intention and in place for the project in general so in for open or active to be really successful we wanted to just direct more focus towards MEL and really embed embedding it through the project mechanisms. And that's why we are using some frameworks like logic models and KPIs to just demonstrate uh, and communicate the impact of the work that we are doing from a social value perspective, governance contributions it's having, and general impact, positive impact of the work uh, that's going out there. 
Um, in general, the work that we're doing is to capture data and stories, uh, both qualitative and quantitative, and any learning opportunities uh, to really just capture them in terms of the steps that we followed in phase five, it was to develop a uh, logic model for the project, uh, which will be published in the blog, which all of you can soon access and we'll share it on the Slack channel as well. And also to create a KPIs and MEL plan to ensure that we undertake any monitoring and evaluation that I'm basically, it's already, uh, Big, it's already begun and we'll have like the first milestone ending in third, like ending end of this year, the next one in mid next year and the final targets to be hit by end next year. And uh, to just ensure that we facilitate any learning and reflection from those and evaluate eventual benefits. Uh, the kind of KPIs that we have are, there are at least like 40 plus KPIs that we have. A few of them that I can highlight right now are uh, things like, implementation of a data quality reporting framework for all publishers so that we can publish it um, as a as a good framework to be abided by um, like the larger community and also ensuring that number of queries are resolved by community members again uh, so that the emphasis is really on participation and community engagement rather than just like a very siloed approach that we probably had uh, previously and also to ensure like some of those is like number of open activity types to be routinely published with a target of like 350 and uh, ensuring that the amount of that we have enough amount of uh, funding secured uh, for the initiative to be an end like independent entity moving forwards um, just ensuring that we at least hit a target of 500k to be able to do that as well are just like few of the many kpis that you will uh, soon read when the blog is out um, also, I think one, one more exciting KPI that uh, all of us are really looking forward to is the use case, like qualified potential use cases in community, which could be ranging from uh, work related to disability, sports related to social prescribing, schools, um, and, and in general, like relating to uh, areas where we can ensure we are reaching out to underrepresented groups, uh, which was a major mandate for the phase five uh, as well. And yes, these are just like some of the KPIs and the thinking behind the broader MEL framework. Happy to answer and respond to any questions anyone has right now. Thanks, Kenneka. Looks like you were comprehensive enough that uh, no, no one has anything to, <laughs> to pick you up on. Cool. Great. Thank you very much for that update, Kanika. And yeah, uh, did um, did you have any sort of rough date of when the blog might be coming out? It's currently in review stage. It's ready and we'll be just sending it out to a few people for final reviews. So it should be out before 15th of December at max. Um, so pretty soon. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So um, keep an eye again on the on comms channels for that coming out in the ne in the next couple of weeks and uh, give you a chance to d digest that and i'm sure there'll be opportunities to kind of ask ask questions and um and uh, make any comments and things on that as well in in the upcoming weeks um just moving on then quickly to um something that happened uh, recently which um adam was uh, a big part of and we're, we're really grateful so um we recently had our um, some annual summit at the Open Data Institute and one of the panel discussions was around access to sports for disabled people and people with um, long-term health conditions and how um, access to data can help to tackle some of those barriers and we had um, a panel discussion which was led by the ODI CEO Louise uh, Burke who's also on the steering committee um, and was um, contributed to by Adam from Sport England and also Barry Lloyd from Paralympics GB um, who leads on the Parasport Activity Finder and um, Tanya Nadaraja who's a former para archer and Paralympian who's a part of the Parasport Lived Experience Group and it was a really great discussion um, really strong um, and uh, hearing some of um, Tanya's lived experience was really powerful as well and really brought to life um, sort of some of the work we're doing and, and some of the impact that we can have 
Um, unfortunately, um, the event was a, a kind of a ticketed event, so um, we're not able to share the recording at this time, but there are some follow up um, things with Tanya planned. So we've got a canal side chat uh, in coming up in a couple of weeks time. I think it's a, a week on Monday. Um, and we can we can share that. But if you look at the ODI's um, comms channels, they'll be um, at, and they're free to, free to attend. But you can book a ticket. So if you keep an eye on the ODI's comms channels, you can uh, book a ticket uh, to attend that uh, either virtually or in person at the ODI's offices. Um, and also, um, she will be writing a blog blog post for us as well, sort of talking about some of her experiences and mentioning open active and and how open active can help so yeah something else to to keep an eye out on our, our comms channels and actually just off off the back of that as well we're we're um at the next adoption engagement forum meeting in a couple of weeks time where hopefully we'll have some speakers from both activity alliance and also um barry from parasport as well so there'll kind of be a, a loose theme around accessibility and disability sport at the next adoption engagement forum so yeah it'd be great to have um all of you all of you there as, as many as possible because i think that'd be really really interesting discussion um coming up so yeah that was that was really positive and really strong and, and thank you to adam as he's on the call and um, for for contributing to that because yeah it was it was really good and we we're really pleased with how it turned out and then lastly another quick update on here in terms of um next steps for terms of reference so thank thank you to everyone who contributed to that and and commented on the the first kind of initial draft and, and in the discussions we had in the previous couple of adoption engagement forum meetings so it was really really useful and I think we um particularly in the, in the last meeting we we started to really come to a kind of consensus and a strong way forward for for the AEF in through this um phase and um just to update you on the next steps that will we've been kind of creating a revised version based on um on the comments that we've received and and the discussions we've had and we'll be sharing that early next week um ag again with an opportunity to comment uh, and to digest and, and read through the revised version and then hopefully we can um, possibly get that signed off at the, the next um, adoption engagement forum if everyone is happy with it um, in, in a couple of weeks time so yeah just just look out for that revised version which which I'll share um, through through the slack channel um, uh, early next week did anyone have any questions on any anything any of those updates or or anything in relation to any of those points i'm just uh, popping in here a little quickly because i i felt that uh, the summit conversation was so helpful like from our disability sports and like some other social impact point of views as well that if anyone i think it would be nice to even sometimes talk about uh, the impact that uh, people in this group are having uh, in in like different areas of convenings or work. I think it will be really important to thread those narratives as well. I don't know if we can have a section in this uh, adoption engagement forum where we just discuss like a quick uh, update, probably during the introductions of like impacts we've had. Of course, it, it cannot be there always, but in case someone has something they can just like discuss those. I think it will be really encouraging to just know about any social governance impacts that our teams or publishers here are having at their own workplaces. Thank you. I think, I think impact's a really important block of work, right? Because I think um, hearing about what, what impact people are having at any level of the, of the initiative is, is important for us all to keep momentum going. I think that's all really positive. And I think actually, um, Tim, actually, there's another really positive one from, from the ODI in this space, right, in, in terms of being included in that um, Europa data uh, research use case as well. Um, you know, that's, uh, I, I'll let you talk a bit more about it because you, you'll sort of know where that, that came from. But again, that's uh, to be featured in amongst that is is, is positive, you know, and, and that's for the, the whole initiative in itself. But I think at, at any layer where, where we're dealing with, like, you know, local delivery or delivery to a specific audience group, you know, I think just constantly sharing that and trying to build build that critical mass of, of, of evidence and impact is always really good. 
yeah definitely so yeah just that we shared that through the open active um social channels and the odi social channels um i think it was earlier earlier this week um but for those who didn't see it uh, yeah we were contacted a few months ago by um an organization called data.europa.eu and if you put data.europa.eu in as a, a url you'll, you'll get to the website um, and they were interested in they're running this kind of use case or, ca or case study um, program for for a whole bunch of um, uh, open data and uh, digital initiatives across the EU. Um, and they wanted to include open active and um, asked us to contribute to that. Um, and the first report was just published, which is what, what we um, put out earlier earlier this week through our social channels so yeah if you have a look through the open active twitter um twitter channel um or the odi's twitter channel um oh thanks kanika's just put, put in a link to it in the chat as well um you'll be able to find find the link to that with all the information but yeah it's really positive and it's um it's something that they're going to revisit in a year or two's time for a kind of update on on progress and what uh, you know how the initiative has developed and moved forward in that time so yeah really really encouraging thing to be part of um potentially um you know might uh, open up some doors and, and make some connections for the initiative so yeah really encouraging and uh, yeah d definitely go take a look and, and have a look through that because it's uh, really interesting Cool. Well, we've kind of raced through the agenda today, so it's um, really good. So just kind of moving on to any other business, if um, anyone has anything that they'd, they'd like to raise. Oh, sorry, before I OB, um, uh, Tim, just one quick, yeah, sure. uh, that, that's great news. I missed that on Twitter. Um, maybe a, an idea to post on the Open Active Slack as well as Twitter, just to make okay. sure that everyone is aware of without having to check lots of different places for all the Open Active stuff. Yeah, so sure. Cool. Sure. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good point, Nick. Um, cool. And again, goes back to some of the discussion we were having earlier. I think about uh, improving our our comms and um, what channels things go out with. But yeah, no, that's a, a good point. So thank thank you for picking up on that. Cool. Okay. Uh, if no one else has anything they'd like to raise then i think maybe we could we can um we can finish finish a bit early today but um yeah thank you very much for joining particularly particularly adam for joining us and, and hope to see uh, see you or, or one of your sport england colleagues again um moving forward um and i just encourage anyone uh, to uh, share if anyone has anything they're working on or anything they'd like to include in future agendas on the aef then yeah but please do do get in touch um and yeah happy happy to include anything if uh, if you know it'd be great to hear about you know some of the work going on and and um any challenges you're facing and any successes you're having all those sorts of things would be really good so yeah anyone listening on the call or uh, or anyone on the call or anyone uh, watching or listening to the recording then yeah really encourage you to please get in touch if you've if you've got anything you'd like to share or, or talk about and uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining and uh, hopefully see you again in a couple of weeks time where, as I say, we're hoping to have a kind of loose uh, disability or accessibility team with Activity Alliance and Parasport here. So I think it should be a really, really um, interesting meeting next time. So I hope to, hope to see you all there.